Hey guys, welcome back. So as promised, I am doing an extra reading this week. It is a little bit later than I had hoped for, but I am still here, still doing it. Um, so that's all that matters. And yeah, this is going to be for divine soulmates where there is no communication or no contact. Now, I do realize that there are a lot of you out there who are in like a gray area where you might not be like 100% no communication, but you're not 100% in communication either. So this reading may or may not resonate with you as well. Um, <clears throat> it is general, so it's not going to be everybody's situation anyway, so do keep that in mind. Um, just take the messages as they resonate and if they do. All right, and if you would like a personal reading, you can find all that information in the description box. All right, and I think that's all I have to say before we get started. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at what is going on with the masculines and also for the feminines, I may or may not look at these energies in parallel. We'll see, however I feel guided. And then we will also take a look at what is coming up in the near future. So let's get started with the masculines and get a couple oracle cards first, and then we'll get into the tarot. So what is going on please, with the masculines? I feel like I wanna get one more here. Yeah, I knew there was one more that wanted to come out. So we have walking away in deceit. <clears throat> so there's something that may have been deceitful in their lives, um, maybe other people, maybe just their own way of living, their own beliefs, whatever it is, they're walking away <clears throat> from anything that is deceitful. And again, this could be their own, their own thinking, um, their own beliefs, possibly even, you know, just um, behaviors that have been deceitful, they're walking away from that. Let's see what else. Oh, we got two again. And we have a resilience and wisdom. I feel like we keep getting this resilience card lately. Um, and again, I'm going to say something similar to what I've said before with this card because this is the message that I'm getting. Um, they have become resilient to not being happy, basically. And But at the same time, it's like they're also getting stronger in, in the good sense, okay? Because it's like it's through that that they're gaining wisdom. So what I'm getting with this is actually that they're able to see through the fact that, you know, the more that they wait, the more that they hung around in this deceit, whatever that deceit is for each of them, it's like the more resilient they became to that, the more resilient they became to unhappiness and the more that they could tolerate it. But this is teaching them a lot, right? And that's why they're walking away from that. So I'm just going to get a couple more. See if we can get anything else here. Because I'm also getting here with this wisdom and the resilience that, and what I'm talking about with strength, is gaining that wisdom, gaining that knowledge, and that understanding that they are actually stronger than, than they think. And that is also what is helping them to walk away from the deceit, from something you know that has been really, really difficult for them to do. For some of them, of course, this could be a third party, all right, but it doesn't have to be. Let's see, let me get like two or three more. Okay, and we have healing, abandoned, and nostalgia. So, and here's Manix. So a lot of this, um, this deceit that has been playing out, it's because there's some kind of an abandonment wound, all right? And this is something that they are healing, whether they realize it or not, because sometimes events happen to us or occur in our lives to kind of force us to heal, whether we do that consciously or not. It's like reliving some kind of an experience and then we're gaining the knowledge, we're gaining wisdom, and thereby we are also healing that wound. Now, of course, you know, the more conscious somebody is of this process, the faster and the more efficiently that they will heal this wound, right? So that's why we always say, you know, try to heal your wounds, you know, um, practice certain things, um, 
you know, like certain meditations or doing shadow work that can help you to heal faster. But that doesn't mean that other people who don't do these things that they never heal at all. All right. So that's what I see um, happening here. And so what's happening here is that the more that they are healing this abandonment wound that they have from their past, um, you know, the clearer their energy becomes. And so the more nostalgia that they have for their feminine. It's like the amount of nostalgia that they feel consciously is directly related to how much they heal their own abandonment wound. So, and I feel like not only that, but the more that, that this abandonment wound is being healed, you know, the easier it is for them to also walk away from the de deceit. And it's kind of like it goes both ways. Because the more that they walk away from the deceit, you know, the more they're able to heal. It's, it, yeah, it, it, it goes both ways. So let's get into the tarot i just want to get like one or two cards just to represent what may have been going on recently for the masculines or a recent past let's see what have they been going through what has been happening Ooh, and they are all in reverse. All right, and we have the Five of Wands, the Two of Wands, and the Five of Swords in reverse. Okay, wow. So it's actually quite positive that these cards are in reverse um, because to me this is representing the fact that they are coming out of these negative energies. So there's been a lot of conflict, and I feel like this conflict has also been within their own self, but also for some of them with other people. Um, and because of that, there's been a lot of holding back, a lot of procrastination, possibly a lot of, um, you know, maybe planning but not acting on those plans. And again, with the Five of Swords, you, to me, this is deceit, but it's in reverse. Why? Because they're, they're walking away from it. Like, this is something they're already doing. This is not a future energy, right? That walking away from deceit that we saw in the very beginning. It's showing up again here, and it's actually in things that have already been happening, so what I'm getting with this is that, you know, it's like they were stalling in terms of moving away from these negative energies, the five of wands and the five of swords, right? Conflict, deceit. And again, that's going to be different um, for each of them because this is, this reading is general. So you, if you know a little bit about their situation, then, you know, this might make sense to you. So let's see what's going on with the masculines currently. Masculines in this particular group. Queen of Pentacles in reverse, the Chariot, and the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, uh, interesting, because it's like there's a lot of action here with the chariot. I feel like this is um, a lot of drive. But then we have the eight of pentacles in reverse, which is like not, not putting in effort, right? Not working towards something. So, and all of this is in relation to a queen of pentacles who is in reverse, which, by the way, is not the divine feminine <laughs> for me, the queen of pentacles. Um... To me, oftentimes, it does represent um, a karmic partner or s someone else. And it doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It could be anybody. This could even be a group of people. It doesn't even really matter. Um, the point is here is that there is a situation outside of the feminine that they are not putting in effort towards. And I'm getting with this chariot. It's actually moving away from that situation. However, it does, it does feel like something new to them. It's like not really knowing how to go about it. And so I feel like they, they might be also making some mistakes because it's kind of, it almost feels like it's also a little bit impulsively, even though they have that wisdom, it's still something new to them. And so it can feel a little bit intimidating, but we will clarify these and get more clarity on that. Um, but before we do, um, let's take a look at their energy towards their feminine. What is their energy towards their feminine? Currently. 
lightly. The world in reverse, the eight of swords in reverse, and the moon in reverse. Wow, they have so many reversals, um, but they're mostly like, well, yeah, not all of them, but most of them are cards that would have been more negative if they were upright, um, for me at least. So this is clearly that the masculine is feeling like it's not done, it's not over with the feminine, and that doesn't surprise me that they are actually feeling this way towards their feminine because we do have the nostalgia card. So they are aware, right, of the feminine's energy and the feminine is on their mind. Feeling like something has been left um, hanging or like something has been left incomplete, that there's something that either Okay, here's how it's coming in. It's coming in as if they want they feel like they need closure, but it's also not exactly closure. It's more of, okay, you know what? We left this hanging in the air. Like we never really concluded on that, or it just feels like it wasn't closed out properly. But without that meaning that they necessarily want it to close out, it's more of like a justification to their own self for thinking about you. Um, but then deep down also, you know, feeling like, they do have that deeper nostalgia, you know, for something more meaningful, more long lasting. They're also coming out of their fear and out of their headspace concerning um, the fact that this is not done. So overcoming some kind of a fear here that has been keeping them stuck. And that's just further reinforced with the moon being in reverse. This is all about clarity. This is about um, repressed emotions coming to the surface and breaking away the illusions. Let me just see what that card was. Yeah, wisdom. So let's just, let's clarify a little bit before we move on. So let's clarify that top row, that deceit that they're moving away from. have the Ten of Cups, the, th the Three of Cups in Reverse, and then the Queen of Wands. All right, so there was some deceit here in terms of happiness or in terms of family or in terms of what gives them fulfillment. Um, that was, whatever that was, it was false. And there was a lot of conflict surrounding that so it's kind of like you know there was this illusion of happiness here with the ten of cups but it's clarifying the, the five of wands so there was conflict here but like i said it's like they're coming out of that moving away from that from that conflict and it may even be like resistance from other people in terms of what the masculine wants. So it could be that people were against, other people were against what the masculine wants. And it, I mean, it could even be society. It doesn't have to be a particular person. Um, again, take it as it resonates. And so here's that two of wands clarified by the three of cups in reverse. So the masculine had, it's like they were stalling, right? They, ha they had thoughts, even in the recent past, in terms of some kind of a plan which is involving um, a reconciliation or going after what it is that would make them happy. And they were avoiding that. There was a lot of stalling in terms of that plan. And I do feel like, of course, that that has to do with the feminine here. And this is where the deceit is. The Five of Swords is clarified by this Queen of Wands. So there was this deceit in 
Again, it has to do with their divine feminine. So it's like they were, it feels like choose, choosing, choosing like fake happiness or superficial happiness where it turned out that this created a lot of problems, possibly even arguments, competition, um, resistance, argumentativeness from others in that superficial um, happy life. And so any plans or any thinking in terms of moving towards their feminine, it's like it was sabotaged, but I feel like it was sabotaged mostly by their own self. The other people are not really to blame because it was the masculine who allowed that who allowed that to happen or allowed their own self to be influenced. Let's see the second row for their current energy. They definitely released this. Whoever this is, whoever this Queen of Pentacles is, they released this energy, okay? Which again, it can definitely be a person. It doesn't have to be because um, it's clarified by the Four of Pentacles in reverse. And then we have, what is this? The Knight of Pentacles also in reverse. And then the Knight of Cups. So they're picking up the pace here pretty quickly. Again, this time it's like they don't really have a plan though. That's the thing. It's like whatever it is that they're moving away from, they're doing it, as I said, impulsively. There is no plan. It's not very stable. Um, and so it could, it could feel like it's all over the place. So if you happen to know about something like that, that, that your masculine is doing, yeah, it's going to be a little bit all over the place. It's not very well thought out. It feels more of like an instinctual drive that they have to just move away from whatever situation um, they're in. So definitely not putting in any effort in that, I feel like they're also just not very focused. It's almost as if they're just allowing themselves to be led by their hearts rather than thinking it through or focusing on it in a practical way. No, there is no focusing in a practical way on any of this. Let's see here for their energy towards their feminine. Let's see, let's see the world. I mean, I'm clarifying like every single card here. And we have the Six of Wands in reverse. Yeah, they feel like something failed. They feel like um, like, there, like there was some kind of a failure here. And I'm even getting that they might even feel embarrassed or um, like their ego is kind of, it's kind of there. It's kind of there. Like they're feeling the, the consciousness, right? So it is hurting their ego a little bit as to whatever it is that happened between the two of you where it feels like something was left hanging. So, I mean, this could be anything. It could be, you know, that they didn't apologize for something that they should have apologized for. It could be that, um, you know, they ghosted you, for example, and just kind of left it like that. So they're, they are feeling a bit weird about that. And so now it's like their ego is like, oh my God, you know, like <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, let's see the Eight of Swords. Whatever that is, though, they're overcoming it with that Eight of Swords being in reverse. Oh, and we have the Devil. Okay, so that's actually, that's actually good. So there is still some fear here, okay? Let's not like, <laughs> you know... Um, Let's not over overdo it <laughs> with all the positives. Um, although this, these are the cards that I'm getting, right? I mean, this is what's coming through. But there is still some fear. That's why we have the Eight of Swords out to begin with, right? But it is in reverse, so they are coming out of that. But I feel like for the most part, like whatever it is that was keeping them very, very... Um, like, like their biggest fear, that's the one that is being, that they're being presented with at the moment concerning their feminine. And that's the one 
that they are overcoming. They're gaining a lot of clarity, as I said, on that. And this could be anything, right? Because um, this devil's energy, I mean, this could be an attachment to something else or a fear of having an attachment with the feminine or, um, you know, a, a fear of the intensity. Whatever it is, because everybody's situation is different. It's like that devil was keeping them stuck. That's what they're coming out of, even though their ego is still kind of there. That's what I feel is the biggest block. Um, but let's see the moon, which is also in reverse. Okay, and we have the chariot in reverse. So a lot of clarity on the fact that, you know, they weren't actually acting on that drive that they're feeling right now. Um... So, it, and it does feel like they're still, you know, not like charging full speed ahead towards their feminine. I feel like they're mostly charging full speed away from some kind of deceit that has been playing out, which could even be, you know, other people being deceitful to them, for example. Um, so, yeah, they're not like <laughs> rushing towards the feminine at the moment, but they are gaining a lot of clarity over the fact that they haven't and that because they haven't, things feel unresolved to them. There's this nostalgia, right? So a lot here that's going on for them. Let's see if we can get a little bit more details here for their energy towards their feminine. Let's see what's going on in their headspace. So what are they thinking about their feminine? Oh, there's actually two here. Okay, so we have the six of wands, the seven of cups in reverse, the nine of wands in reverse, which were together, and then the ten of wands in reverse. Okay, so they're thinking that they actually want to have that success, right? Whatever it is that they feel that failed in the past, they want to have that that success. Not only that, they're they're seeing the feminine as actually um, almost like being ahead of them. Almost like they see you as either having the upper hand in a way, maybe because of what has happened in the past, and that's what's affecting their ego. Or they just see you as being very, very successful and, you know, having possibly having moved on or just, you know, doing your own thing. But either way, they're wanting, it's like they're wanting to meet you there. So that's what they're thinking. And again, Seven of Cups being in reverse and the Nine of Wands being in reverse. Um, they're seeing this as, they're thinking that this is something that is more achievable right now. So again, having more clarity, not seeing it as something that is so, so difficult like it once was. Maybe, the, And maybe for some of them it was difficult in terms of them putting their ego aside to come to you. And then for others, it could be that they just found the relationship, the connection to be very, very difficult. And again, I feel like a part of that, even though it's true, right, these types of relationships do tend to be very difficult. A big part of that was also based in illusion, based on something that was not true, not having clarity because of fear. And so it's like destroying or breaking those illusions of how difficult this connection would be. And it's pretty much the same message here with that Ten of Wands. Um, it's like they're, they're even feeling like, you know, if they could have that success, right, whatever, whatever it is, again, from the past that has been left hanging, it's like they, they, they're thinking that that would actually be a relief, a relief for them. So let's see what's going on for them emotionally towards their feminines. Six 
of Swords in reverse, Strength, and the Emperor in reverse. Yeah, they're definitely feeling less than you. Um, definitely feeling like either you have the upper hand or that you're just like above them in some, some way. It, they have not recovered from whatever it is that has happened between the two of you with the Six of Swords being in reverse. They have not been able to find peace without you. They have not been able to move away from this or move on from that pain that it caused. Um, I do like that we have strength right in the middle here because also with the Emperor in reverse, it's like, again, you know, they're feeling, like I said, they're feeling less than you, but they're gradually building up that courage. They're gradually building up that strength. And I feel like that's happening in line with, you know, the more that they heal, as I said in the beginning, in order to feel like, yeah, you know, um, they do have what it takes to be at your quote unquote level. So I don't feel like we need to clarify these. I actually want to move on to the feminines because we did spend quite a bit of time here on the masculines and we still have to look at the future energies. All right, so let's see. Let's take a quicker look at the feminines. What is going on with the feminines, please? Oh, we got two again. All right, and we have contract and caring connections. Okay, interesting. Let me just get the rest of them. I feel like for a small group of you, this could definitely be talking about some other connection that you might be having with somebody um, where you're either trying to make a decision about it. For some of you, this could even be um, thinking about divorce, possibly even marriage for some of you, but let's see, or maybe even some kind of other partnership with somebody. And it, it could even be, you know, that you're kind of contemplating what to do, even if it is a business partnership, like as if you feel like there's a potential there. Um, but then, you know, you also have your masculine on your mind, so it can get a little tricky. So I feel like that's just for a small group of you. We'll see. We have, okay, Will. Yeah, okay. I do feel like this has to do with something. Where you're not really sure. And it could even, it doesn't have to be about somebody else. This could totally be about your masculine. Um... Possibly even trying to make a decision here in terms of like what you want to do about it. What do you want to do with this like invisible contract, right? Or like if you feel like you have a soul contract, trying to understand or trying to accept the masculine's free will or, you know, if you have a choice either to break away from it or, or something. Let's see. What else for the feminines? What is this about? All right, inner child, metamorphosis, and soulmate. It definitely feels like, you know, you, you're healing as well. So there's something that you are healing, either whether you realize it or not, just like the masculine. I feel like that is kind of mirroring here between the two of you and it's changing you. I feel like it, it could even be changing the way that you view this connection in terms of either respecting their free will, respecting their choices. Not that you weren't respecting them before, but it's like a deeper understanding of that or like, you know, because this is somebody that you care so much about, regardless of what may have happened, right? You, if, if this is a divine soulmate, you care about them, okay? Um, so because you, this is someone that you care so much about, it's like being able to see it from that perspective. Like, I care about this person. I love this person. 
I respect their free will. If that's what they want, you know, then I'm okay with that. And it's like making that decision to be okay with that, finding that balance within you or, you know, understanding that you still have this bond, kind of, you know, like a contract. It's there no matter what. So I feel like you're either really like beginning to understand that or you're moving in that direction or, you know, just take that as a message. Because something is shifting here in the way that you perceive this soulmate connection. And it is stemming from your inner child. I feel like it has to do with um, the more that you are healing your inner child, whether you're you know, deliberately doing that or whether events are happening in your life that are helping you to heal some of those wounds. Um, okay, so let's... I think we're just going to get one row for the feminines and then move on to what is coming up. Really interesting. First card out is justice, which is just like that contract card, right? With the scales and the blindfold, usually in justice, um, there's a woman holding, uh, wearing a blindfold. So it's very, very similar. Um, the Hierophant and the Hanged Man in reverse. So all major arcana cards. definitely making big decisions or just finding that balance within your own self but I, I do feel it's it's like making a decision based on knowledge based on your higher wisdom like being able to understand more deeply this situation being able to see it from a different perspective and because of that it's like you're getting your own self unstuck not only are you getting yourself unstuck, it, and it might feel very slow and very gradual, but it is happening. You're gaining a lot. You're learning a lot. Um, this is also you accepting that and understanding that this connection will always be what it is, but I have to respect their free will. And if, you know, the masculine wants to stay, you know, where he or she is, you know, then I'm going to be okay with that. That's fair because of free will. It doesn't mean that the masculine will stay stuck, right? I'm actually seeing quite the opposite here. But you coming to that um, understanding, though, is very important for you. And now, again, <laughs> it's very interesting to me that we have contracts and caring connections, and then we have justice and the hierophant, which can definitely talk about a marriage or some kind of um, some kind of a connection. So I feel like this is the second time that we're getting a very specific message. It's like a double message, all right, for a group of you who might actually be in the process of making a decision to either divorce from some kind of a commitment or maybe even um, some kind of major transformation or a major decision in terms of a commitment, which doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be even career. Um, it could be anything, but something that you've been committed to, okay? You're getting yourself unstuck. And if you've been thinking about it, but you're, you're, you're not sure, you know, take this as your sign. You know, if this resonates with you. Um, all right, let's see what's coming up. So what is coming up for the masculines in their energy towards their feminine? next couple of weeks or maybe even a few weeks future energies are always relevant like there is no really like like a set time um, all right we have the queen of cups justice for them as well and death okay wow major energies for the masculines coming up um, tuning into their intuition big time. Um, again, remember before with the Knight of Cups, I was saying, you know, that it's like they're letting their heart drive them and so they don't really know where they're going, like they haven't really thought it out. I feel like that's actually growing um, and they're beginning to understand their intuition more and more and allowing their hearts to guide them towards 
major, major decisions here, major transformation. Wow. <laughs> it just feels like it's it's mirroring the some of the feminines here um, a lot. Right? Because even without the death card for the feminines, I was saying it's like, you know, possibly shifting careers or, you know, maybe even, you know, divorce if you're if you're married or, you know, ending some kind of a relationship or something or some kind of a commitment. And it feels like it could be the same for this particular masculine, okay? For a group of them that you know, um, that that would make sense for. Because this is all about making some kind of a major decision. It could even be a legal um, issue at hand and it's together with death. So it's like some kind of an ending. This is not an ending of their connection with the feminine. It is in some way related, but this is not towards their feminine. This is some kind of a major, major transition. And it's kind of like we did see a hint of that here somewhere. Where was it? Um, where it's like they're beginning to see things from a different perspective that, you know, this is not as this, this connection or, you know, moving in that direction towards the feminine is not as difficult or not as impossible as they once thought. That's a major transition as well. So, should we clarify? Yeah, you know what? I usually don't. <laughs> I usually don't clarify these um, future energies just because it's future, not set in stone. Um, just you know, very likely potentials, but let me just get one or two clarifiers here. All right, and we have two pages. We have the Page of Wands in reverse and the Page of Swords upright. Okay. So it's like whatever this decision is here that they're making concerning this ending. First of all, like I said, okay, yeah, it's following their intuition, right? It's, it's going to be in alignment. Um, I feel like they really want to move out of that instability that they find themselves in now where it's like just acting really, really impulsively. So it's like they don't even really know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing. Um, so whatever this is, it's not being, it's not giving us the specifics of what it is, but they're definitely wanting to go about it in a more logical way and um, almost like explore their options in terms of how to bring about this transition. And it's like, and this is actually good. Um, I, I'm seeing this as a good thing. Not wanting to just act on impulse because then, you know, it might not be done in the right way. It could just take them anywhere or, you know, they might not complete this action. They're still in the initial steps of it, though having these two pages here and for a lot of them yes you know this could definitely involve communication right two pages and especially the page of swords being the one that is upright and that could even be the transition you know and that even could be the major decision here and you know um the fact that they are really putting an end to the way that things were before and to the illusions that they were holding on to Okay, so let's get some final oracle cards to close this out. And we have come to the edge. Yeah, and I feel like they're like right there. They're like right on that edge. They're standing right on that edge. About to take a big leap, about to make a really big decision um, that's involving a huge transition, something, you know, that's going to be very, very different. So yeah, I feel like I feel like that is it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, please give me a like if you like this reading. If it resonated with you, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Much love.